Hello Internet, it is October 24th, 2010. We're going to do an unboxing, a features investigation, and a how-to firmware update of the 7-inch Android 2.1 device bought on MerryMobiles.com called the HiPad M701R. This is an unboxing here, and being from Mary Mobiles, it's nice they included this leather case to protect the device. I'm going to quickly look at the device, do an unboxing, and then get into some more fun stuff. Uh, this has the Apple clone button at the bottom here, um, two side buttons for menu and home, an HDMI out here. This is a mini, not a micro. The mini USB 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, power charging uh, port, microphone here. It says it had micro SD slot. Um, on the back of this device, it has a barcode that says M701R, single speaker. And let's look at the rest of the box now. Nice case. User's guide in English, it looks like. Nice. Some Asian thing. The power charger. An IR remote to control the device. We will test that out in this video as well. Uh, it comes with a mini HDMI to regular HDMI cable and headphones, mini USB cable, and it looks like an adapter to regular USB. Next, we will show you how to do Before you can update the firmware, you have to get the device into the update mode. To do this, it's really three steps. The first step is while holding this left menu button at the top, turn the power on. Second step, let go, press this button. Third step, press both this button and the menu button again. And this needs to be done in rapid succession. So, first step, hold this button, turn on. Second step, push the button. Third step, hold both. And we keep holding those until we get to the update screen. So I'm still holding these two buttons. And now we're in the update screen. And I'll show you how uh, to, what to do next on the Now computer. I'm going to show you how to do the update on the computer. First, search Google for firmwares for HiPad M701 kernel and go to the first link, which is on androidtablets.net. Great post by Fun that shows us all the past kernels and has a link to get them. Um, these are some instructions, so in case you can't follow this video, you can follow these. Um, but now I'm going to actually show you how to get it. So we want the 929 kernel 133 because that's the most up to date. If there's a newer version, just go to highpad.net and find it in the downloads. Now, I can't read this language, so what I'm going to do is go to translate.google.com, type in the URL, and click translate. Google's going to translate it for me. So here we go, the September 30th firmware, and the download address is right here. And again, with that download address, we might have to copy and paste that into Google. Then clicking on this link here will allow you to save the file. Next, after you save it and extract it, you want to extract the folder fwdn to C, um, the root of your hard drive. And so what comes next is right-clicking on the exe fwdn, going into compatibility, checking run this program as administrator, checking run this program in compatibility mode, click OK, double-click. Now we want to add these three files lk.rom, tcc8900, the image file, the data, NAND data, and the ROM. These three files should have been included in the download, and you add them by clicking this dot dot dot, selecting the file, and then clicking Add File. The next thing you want to do is go into Tools, Options, and modify this area to read as follows. Um, insert Wi-Fi MAC address, no auto increment, um, make sure this is unchecked, this is unchecked, and to find these values and generate your own custom serial, you actually want to go to your wireless properties, click status, and then click details. And those, those figures are actually pulled from the physical address. So the first six, 0013E8, go in the left box after a 0x, and then the next six go in the following box. So we've got 6EAD89 here. Click apply. Now before we go on to the next part, you may have to install the driver just found in the FWDN folder in VTC DRV. After you install that, you can actually use the instructions located in this folder 
they'll explain why you need to use the MAC address. Uh, it's basically for the marketplace to make sure that works. So I'm going to actually try these instructions um, because it's different for every kernel version. The previous method may not work for the version that you get. So I'm going to try these, which say when the machine is turned off, put the key, put the button in the off position, hold down the menu key, and I'm assuming they actually mean what is labeled as the home key. Now I'm going to insert the USB cable into both the computer and the device. I'm going to toggle it to the on position. And we'll see what happens now. The computer seemed to have found something. Let's see if this has changed. Device probing. So that's actually good. That's what we want. Um, now, if you get frozen here, use a USB thumb drive to jumpstart this process. So I'm going to plug that into my computer right now. So as soon as I was frozen, I just unplugged it. Plugged it back in, and I used a uh, SD card. And now this time it worked. Um, and now we actually see the NAND data. So I'm going to click on that. Just going to pull up this button. So now we're just going to make sure that it looks uh, correct here. So NAND data FAI, yep. Number of partitions one. Fat, uh, and it says we're going to change. All we have to change here is label it high pad. Is there a case P? Yes, there is. Probably oh, doesn't matter. And I believe the next step is just to click create image. Bam. Okay, and now we just click the start button. And hopefully we will not break the device. And again, if it gets frozen here, I think that you can just use various USB devices to initiate. So I just unplugged my SD card and it initiated this loading screen. This English is really poor here in these instructions. But I would strongly suggest MaryMobiles.com. My experience with them was very positive. The shipping was fast. The customer service spoke English very well. And they actually included all of that stuff that I showed you. And I found a stylus in the box as well. So hopefully this is all you need to do to update your firmware. I'm going to pause the video and then resume once it finishes loading. Awesome, this is the screen you should see when it's right, done. Now after we got through the settings screen and the initial setup, this is what the home screen looks like. Uh, so we're going to change on this, this model such that this button no longer acts as the power button, but instead this top left button acts as the power button. And this button acts as the back, which in my opinion is preferable. So 